Hey guys, it's Demi from Demi's Divine Designs, and today we're going to make a pattern that I don't think receives enough love. This bag is so cute. It comes together very quick. It has options in the lining for you to build on it and kind of like add different uh, techniques and different skills to like the different pockets that you could possibly put inside this. And this pattern I just think is adorable. So why nobody's talking about it or making a ton of these, I will never understand. That pattern is the Roxanne Backpack Tote from Swoon. This bag is so cute. I mean, look at how adorable. We got two exterior side pockets. We got a cute little cinch top that opens up nice and wide to a nice lining where you have a zipper pocket. That is what the pattern does talk about having you do. Nice rounded bottom. Well, not really rounded. It's more like an oval, but still adorable. And then this bag just fits so freaking cute. You could do so many different fabric combinations and different color styles to make this just look so elegant. This is the first one I tried and it came out really well. I did have a couple issues which could have just been me misunderstanding the pattern. So I'm just going to make sure I point those out as we go through. This bag doesn't use a lot of hardware, only has one zipper, which if your zipper pull and zipper tape stock is depleting like mine is, this is a great pattern to use to not have to have so many zippers. And it really comes together so quick. It's a fast make. It looks adorable, comes together so nicely. I cannot wait to try this with you guys. All right, so let's go over materials and cuts and we'll get going. All right, the materials that we're going to need for this bag are pretty straightforward. I am using a lot of scraps so I don't have like any yardage left of these. I'm using this beautiful iridescent -y, like crackle looking vinyl that's like a smooth texture on the top. This, I found out by accident, glows in the dark, which was really terrifying when I came down into my sewing room in the middle of the night and like, what the heck is glowing on my table? It was this, but it was really cool. <laughs> so I got this from Wonder Around Fabrics. It is fantastic. I love this vinyl. I'm using scraps of this like faux leather-ish material that I got from Sally Tomato. I'm only using this for a couple of different parts, so I don't have a lot of this. I have um, this cotton fabric that I got from Joann's. I love Animal Crossings. I put way too many hours into that game. Like it is scary how many hours I put into that game. So I'm using, this is my main like accent fabric for the exterior. And then for my lining, I'm again using cotton fabric that I got from Joann's. Both of these came from Joann's. And this is just for the lining pieces. It's just a simple green cotton. Now, because I am using cotton for my uh, accent fabric and my lining, I have to use SF-101 to kind of strengthen these two fabrics up. So make sure you have that as well. And then for the bottom stabilizer, you're going to need some like Peltex, some like really stiff bang, 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 bang interfacing. So make sure you have that as well. And let's go to the cuts that you're going to need for these materials. For your exterior vinyl pieces, these are the cuts that you're going to need. You're gonna need two cuts of your main body exterior, which is your main panel. You're gonna need two of these. You're gonna need one cut for your bottom. I like to do this in the vinyl. I don't like having cotton bottoms for these types of bags, but you do you. If you're comfortable with cotton, go cotton, whatever, go for it. I have two cuts of my pocket tops. This is kind of gonna be like that accent on the top rim of the pocket, which when I first looked at it, I thought it was binding. It's not, so fun, but you're going to need two cuts of those, one for each pocket. For the accent vinyl that is like that uh, faux leather vinyl that I got from Sally Tomato, I think this is going to go really well with anything. Anywho, you're going to need two cuts for your strap connectors that are going to go on the back bottom of the bag, and then you're going to need six, I did cut seven out because I want to test what one more loop is going to look like, of the strap loops, and these are also in... The vinyl. So these are all your vinyl pieces. Now we're going to move on to the exterior cotton pieces and then the lining pieces. For your cotton pieces or the other pieces that I have left, all of these pieces have accompanying SF-101 interfacing to go with them since they are all cotton. So from your side pocket piece, you're going to need two cuts of your exterior fabric, two cuts of your lining fabric, and then of course I have my interfacing because all cotton. Make sure you have those. Your main panel pieces, you're gonna need two cuts of your exterior, 
as well as two cuts of interfacing. Ha ha ha. Lining. You're going to need two cuts of your top lining piece with two cuts of interfacing, two cuts of your bottom uh, lining piece with your lining fabric, two cuts of interfacing, a single cut of your lining bottom with a single cut of interfacing, and then two cuts for your lining pocket piece. This one I am not interfacing. You are more than welcome to interface this. I just didn't feel like it. So there are all of your pieces. Now onto the extra hardware that we're gonna need and the strap. I do have some instructions for the strap. <laughs> extra material that you're going to need for this bag. From your bottom stabilizer cut, you're going to need one cut of your Peltex uh, stiff stabilizer. One thing I did forget to mention is the pattern does call for fusible fleece. And you're gonna need four cuts of that that they specify in the pattern. This is kind of just gonna give your bag a little more structure on the outside mess around with this. Try it with like Decoville Light, Decoville Heavy, even like maybe try Peltex. See how that looks. Experiment with this piece. This piece is not like pivotal, but important. So make sure you have this. Hardware and other stuff. I always keep a wide a range of rulers right next to my sewing machine because you never know which ones you're going to need, when you're going to need them. Always good to have them. So rulers, scissors. I have a ton of different fabric scissors as we all probably do. I have my stiletto seam ripper combo. I love this thing. This thing is amazing. But when I have this side out, it's never a good time. <laughs> so nobody has fun when they take the seam ripper out. But we need that. Marking utensil. Chalk. Uh, water erasable. Air erasable. Don't use like a Sharpie or a pen or anything like that. Don't, don't use that with your fabric stuff. Get those out of your sewing room. You don't need those here. I have my tag. I get my tags from Heartwood and Hyde. Jade is fantastic. Love her. I have my two one-inch rectangle rings and two one-inch sliders. I get these from Wizardry Stitchery, which is also where I get my sewing string. Uh, this one is under the seat. It is a 45 text. It's a 45 weight thread. I love this thing. I love the var her variegated threads are so pretty. Definitely try her variegated threads. Since I do have an industrial machine, I can also have this in the bobbin as well. So that'll be in my bobbin. You're also going to need, I like to have a lighter. And because I am using polyester thread, the lighter can be used to like melt down and like secure those edges. If you're using cotton threads, I don't recommend using cotton threads when you're making bags, but to each their own, right? Since I am using polyester, I can melt down the threads. Good to have lighter. And I finally got one with the long little spout. I hate the little ones. I always burn my hands. Anywho, off topic. <laughs> You're also going to need magnetic snaps or any type of snap closure. I'm going to be using these rivet snaps that I get from cam snaps. I have the die to go with them as well as my cam press with my hole punch die so I can make holes really easily. So you're also going to need a one inch thing of webbing or you can make your own straps. Now, if you are using webbing, the pattern is going to lie to you. This is a mistake that I made on the one that I did the other day. It tells you to cut two cuts of the measurement for your straps. If you're using webbing, don't do that. Do not cut it in two. Take the measurement that they tell you and times it by two, and that's how long you're going to cut your webbing. You want it to be one continuous like web, line, whatever, one strap strap. That's the word I'm looking for, strap. So when I did this on the last one, I cut my webbing to the two in, two cuts like it told me. Then I got to the part where I had to put it in and it's like, oh, sew that together to make it one continuous strap. I was like, yeah, I can't do that with the webbing. So don't do that. Just cut it to be one continuous strap at the measurement that they tell you. Take like the measurement they tell you to cut it to and times that by two. And that's how long you're going to cut your, your strap to. Make sure you do that. So now what we're gonna do before we move on to anything in the pattern building, we're going to fuse all of our SF-101s on all of our cotton pieces. We are going to fuse our bottom onto our exterior bottom piece. We're gonna fuse the fleece centered on all the exterior main panel pieces, and then we are going to get started with building the bag. 
So go through and fuse all of your interfacing onto all of your cotton pieces and all of your stabilizing pieces onto your exteriors. Okay, perfect. Now that we have all of our interfacing fused onto all of our cotton pieces, our bottom support stabilizer piece fused onto our bottom, and our fusible fleece fused onto all of the exteriors, kind of centered, looking like this one, where it's on there, but it's like in the center, so you have about a quarter inch around each edge. We are good to start making the bag. So we're going to start with our side pocket piece. I did forget to mention, make sure you have clips. I feel like that should be a given, but everybody, clips, load up, have a bunch of them. Always keep them. So we're going to start with those. You're going to need your side pocket piece, and you're going to need your little accents. Now, with your accents, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half and clip along those raw edges. Clip, clip, clip. Like this, where we have the raw edges all clipped down. And now this is one where you would think it would be kind of like binding, where we're going to have to stick these two, the exterior and the interior inside this little raw edge, but that is not what we're doing. That is where I messed up on the last one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one exterior and one lining. Move the others to the side. We'll come back to those in a minute. So taking your exterior, you wanna have the shorter edge towards the bottom. So if you have a directional fabric, make sure your top is up on the long end, bottom, down here so the direction is running this way. Phew. Then you're going to take your little accent piece and we're going to lay this along the top adding the exterior into the clips making sure that that top raw edge lines up on both the little accent piece and your exterior panel like this and everything should line up really well. Then you're going to take the exterior, same thing, I mean the interior, same thing, short edge bottom, long edge top, and we're going to whoo, sandwich keeping right sides of the exterior and the interior together, and then we're going to include that into the clip as well. Clip, see mine, my exterior definitely got distorted when I was cutting. So that's a little off, but it is okay. It's the pocket. We have some room for some messes ups like this. Now we can do both this and the other pocket together. I think we should just because I like doing multiple sewy steps at a time. So slide that to the side and we're going to repeat that for the second pocket. Taking your little flappy flap, fold this right sides together, uh, wrong sides together, I'm sorry, and clip. And you're kind of folding it like a hot dog, not hamburger, hot dog. Hot dog bun, num num num. Sorry, I like food and it could just be because I'm hungry. Clip, like so. Same thing, we're going to clip this onto the right side of the exterior, lining up the edges. And if it is a little off, it's okay. You're not really going to notice once we attach everything. Then take your lining, flip that right sides together with your exterior, sandwiching that accent piece in the center, and clip that into place, keeping everything aligned the best that it can. Perfect. And then once you have both of those pockets prepped with the little accent pocket piece in between, we're going to head to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this on at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, perfect. Now that we have those stitched in place, we're going to separate these because I did stitch them at once, just like with a little slip. And we are going to flip these right sides out tugging at that pocket piece to get that top crease nice if you want you could go through and clip this down i'm not going to you could press this too if you would like but i would be careful especially if you have a vinyl accent here you do not want to melt that that would kind of suck 
So give that a nice press, line up the edges like that. And we're gonna do the same on this one. We're gonna pull this out, line up our edges. This one got a little wonky, but it's fine. You're not gonna notice. All right, perfect. Once we have that set, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch along all four sides at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're kind of like top stitching along the vinyl accent and then we're just securing the rest of the pocket down. So it's kind of like one piece. Now that you have the pockets stitched together, securing the exterior to the interior, as well as accenting the pocket top, you are all set to attach these pockets to the side panels. So grab your two side panels. I like to use vinyl as my side panels. I think these are cute. Instead of having these be like the front accent pieces, I like these as the side. Make sure you have your fleece interfacing secured onto this. This is a little harder to secure. If you guys would like to see how I do that, let me know and maybe I'll make a short for it so you guys can refer back to that anytime you need to interface or add any type of stabilizer to vinyl. So moving on, take one of your side pieces and one of your pockets and attaching these pockets is kind of a normal way that I've noticed swoon attaches their pockets. This is the same method they use for like the Annette and the Bell baby bag. So if you're used to swoon patterns, attaching these pockets is gonna seem very familiar to you. If you have not used swoon patterns before and this is your first one, congratulations, great pattern designer. And also this seems scarier than it is. So we're gonna start by taking our bottom side, which is again the shorter side, and we're gonna line that to the bottom side of our side panel. And we are going to clip that into place along that bottom. Once you have that clipped, you're gonna see how the pocket up at the top does extend a bit, which is fine, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it inward, creating that little like whoop for you to get your hand in. I like to start from one side, pull that in, keeping it straight, but lining up the pocket accent piece. And then we're gonna clip along that side, making sure the raw edges for the pocket and the side are even, or like same. Then we're gonna do that on the other side as well. This one we're gonna pull in and it's gonna create like that whoomp for us to get our hand in there. And same thing, make sure that the sides are all even, everything is straight and clip into place. Doing it this way, you're gonna see there's a nice big opening for you to get like your hands in, to get stuff in. And this is the way that I've noticed Swoon typically uh, puts their pockets on for side panels. We're gonna repeat this process for the second side. So move that one out of your way, grab your second side panel, second pocket, and just repeat the process. Start by lining up your bottom and clip that into place the same way. Pull, pull this side up, lining up the edge, keeping everything straight to the best of your ability. Mine wanted to move. and clip that into place as well. Then repeat on the other side, lining up your raw edges and clip into place. Then once you have both pockets clipped on, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are gonna stitch along those clipped edges at like the U at a quarter inch seam allowance, securing the pockets onto the side panels. Once you have that stitch, your pockets are going to be fully attached. And now we're gonna grab our main panels. Same thing, make sure you have your interfacing already fused on and your fleece is on as well. This is where I like to put my tag before I move on to the next step. So make sure you have your main piece, pick one to be your front. I'm just gonna go with this one. We're gonna fold this in half and we're gonna mark our centers. I just like to fold, 
grab my scissors, do a tiny little snip up at the top. And I'm also going to do a snip down at the bottom. And that's going to show me my center line. I'm going to grab my ruler, measure down. I'm going to go four inches. Four inches from my center, making sure that's lined up. Then I'm going to take my tag, center that on as well. And then I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch this into place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, pretty much just top stitching this, holding this on into place here. I'm just gonna run over and do that. I'm not gonna show you on this one. Okay, once you have your uh, label stitched on, we're good to attach the side panel panels to the main panel. So take one of your main panels, though I like to start with the front one, one of your side panels, and we are gonna lay these right sides together and clip them together along the, in this case, it would be my left edge. Like so. So when it opens, it goes pow pow. Then we're going to do the same for the second main panel. Grab your second panel, second side panel. And again, we're going to lay these together and we're going to stitch them along the left side making sure you're lining up just the raw edges with the panel in case your pocket piece hangs over a little bit like mine does. Then you're going to have both side panels and pocket panels clipped together along the left hand side. We're going to run this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this clipped edge on both of these panels at a half of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the left side of both of these panels stitched together, what we're going to do is open these up. It doesn't matter right now, but you're going to want the seam to go towards the main panel, like the accent. Like for me, it'll be this cotton fabric. Same on this one. You're going to want it to go towards this one, but it's not really important for this next step. Just good to keep in mind for the step after this one, which is we're going to be attaching these two panels together. So you're going to take the right side of your one panel, the left side of your other panel, which will be your pocket panel. And we're gonna yeet those together, attaching the other pocket to the main. Laying those in place. Clipping along this right side, attaching these two panels together. Once that's set, you can also clip the other sides together. If you would like, I'm going to do that because I'd like to just get multiple steps done at a time. So same thing, clip the main accent panel to the side panel, keeping everything straight, lining everything up, clip into place. Okay, and once you have those set, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along both of these clipped edges at a half inch seam allowance. Okay, perfect. My bobbin did run out when I was on this side, so I had to replace that. Now I get to trim off a bunch of little threads everywhere. Awesome. So now that's good. Now what we're going to do is kind of flip this right side out. And now we get to top stitch and this probably seems scarier than it is. We are going to make sure all of the seams are going towards the, my fancy animal crossing fabric. Oh my God, this is going to look so cute. Anywho, we're going to go through and we're going to top stitch on just the animal crossing fabric, not the vinyl on both the front and the back. And we're kind of going to just like bowl it <laughs> just like this way and then bring it pulling this bottom out of the way sounds harder than it actually is. So we're going to go do that. And I'm going to do that on both sides of both of the Animal Crossing. So I'm doing four top stitchings total. One here, 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 and 
here, all making sure that my seams are going inside towards the Animal Crossing fabric, not out towards the vinyl. Okay, I changed this camera angle so you guys can see it better, and I ended up turning this back right side out so I can stitch this way. It'll work. See? Watch. See? Ta-da! Now for the other four. The other three. Okay, so that is definitely an interesting way of sewing that down. It would probably be easier if you did it prior to connecting the two and then just only had to do like one or two of those. But because I'm difficult, you saw how I was sewing that. I moved the camera angles around so you guys can see what I was doing. So I'm going to return this right side out because I did flip it the other way. So pop this back out. And we can see that even with my unorthodox way of sewing it, my stitches are still beautiful. They came out pretty darn straight. I'm proud of that. So woohoo. <laughs> so there is this. What we're gonna do is we are gonna put this to the side now that we have both the front and the back top stitched. Move this to your side and grab your strap pieces. One other thing that I forgot to mention in the intro is double-sided tape is your friend here. We should keep a list of everything that I forgot to mention in the intro. We already got clips. Now we're on double-sided tape. Who knows what else I'm going to miss. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our double-sided tape and we're going to go along the center of these strap connectors. I like to do it in one continuous line. Because with this project, I'm just banging out as much as I can in one spot just to help make life a little bit easier. So, doing this in one strip, going somewhere along the center ish, does not have to be perfect. Along all, I have seven of these. Just because with my bag, I thought the six, it was missing one up in the front. I felt like it needed that extra one right in the front center. So I'm going to be adding that on this one. And I'll see if I like it, if it made that big of a difference or if it was just an annoyance. We're going to learn from my mistakes. Or from my genius ideas. We're going to find out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold the raw edges of each of these into the center, which is what the tape is for, to help hold that into place. I'm also going to clip as well because I don't trust that the tape is going to hold everything perfectly. So, to each their own. Do what you please. Oh, me and double-sided tape are going to fight again because of these nails. Hee hee hee. And then just fold towards the center. Now these do not have to be perfect. The little straps, nobody's gonna sit there and measure to make sure that they're 100% accurate. No. And then I'm gonna clip here doing my flat side on the top along that seam just holding everything down like that adding those clips so it's going to make a cute little little strappy strap and now I'm going to zoom through the rest of these. Once we have all of these laid down, the, the clips are really helpful for a few different reasons. One, they do help hold down because as you guys see, the tape doesn't like to fully stick to this faux fur or faux leather. Faux leather, that's what it is. Faux leather, so does help secure that. 
And two, if I fold one of the edges over a little too much where the tape doesn't have a chance to stick on there, then the clips help hold it in place. And now you can leave this as one complete thing. And actually, I think for this one, I'm going to because they all are pretty even. And we're just going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch on both of these folded edges. Just going few and few up one side, down the other side, just pretty much holding these raw edges to the back. And we're doing that at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So learning from my mistake, halfway through when I was stitching them all together as one, I realized that that wasn't going to work. It was hard to keep all of them in line, plus the back was peeling off, and so I lost one due to my stitching being horrible, which is fine because that was an extra one I was going to add anyway. So then I cut them apart and I started stitching them one by one. It did help. This vinyl itself doesn't like me, so... My stitches are not perfect, but you know, it's all right. These are little tabs. It's all that matters. If you wanted to hide your top stitching a little better, just pick thread that matches. And I'm just going to trim these apart now. Like so. We could go through and we could melt threads, whatever we need to. But this is all going to get hidden in seam allowances, so I'm not fully concerned about it. And it's going to be stitched over, so we're going to secure everything down. So it's not my concern fully. So get these all trimmed how you would like. Trim all your threads. Hide every little mess up if you have a few. But shouldn't be too bad. Okay. And then once you have your now six of the strap uh, connectors, what you're going to do is you are going to grab your main panel again. And this is where I got confused looking at the pattern, which I think it really was just me. I believe if you actually read all of the instructions and don't just look at the pictures and guess, you won't do what I did. Where I connected all of them on the main panels, not the side panels, and then I had to redo everything. So we're going to do it the correct way. Where we're going to find our center of our side panels by just folding in half, lining up our seams for our main panel, meets on front and back. Do a little notch, same on this side, line up your edges, and snip. And this is where we are going to put our connectors. So lay your panel with the side panel facing up. Take one of your connectors, fold in half, and with the loop facing you, or facing like down, center it with your center mark, and we are going to clip that into place. Keep, maybe, if it would stop biting me. Clip. Take another connector. Fold and connect that right on, like right in front of that seam. Same thing. Clip into place. Same with the third one. Fold in half. Line it with the other seam. And clip in place. Then we're going to flip this over and do the same on the other side panel. Fold it in half, line your edges up to the center, clip in place, fold your fourth one in half, line it up with your seam, clip in place. Final one, fold it in half. Line it up with your other edge. Clip in place. Now we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to base stitch all six of these into place at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just making sure we secure everything down to the main exterior panel. 
Now that we have those six connectors on the side panel, what we're going to do is we are going to work on the strap connectors. We're kind of doing the same thing that we did for these, for the rectangle ring connectors, just with a different connector. So slide this out of your way, grab your rectangle connectors, and again, grab some double sided tape, tapey tape. Go down the middle. Same on the other one. Down the middle ish. And we are going to do the same thing that we did for the other one, where we're going to fold the raw edges in towards the center, clipping them into place as well. Since we know that this double-sided tape doesn't want to really hold this vinyl down well. Pull the other edge up to meet it in the center. And clip into place as well. Same on the other connector. Fold each edge to meet in the center. You can also be more precise with this if you would want. Fold this in half, draw your line, fold everything up to the line, but I've never really had an issue doing it this way. So you do whatever feels comfortable for you. If you want to make sure it's 100% precise, go ahead. If you don't mind just winging it and it working out, go for it this way. Okay, then once we have that, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch both of these folded edges. So we're doing four all together, one down this edge, this edge, that edge, and that edge, holding down these raw edges and having these prepped for us to put our rectangle rings on. All right, now that that is set, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your strap uh, rectangle ring connectors, make sure that the raw edges are facing inward, like when you stick it in here, you want to make sure that you're folding it where the raw edges go together and you're not seeing it on the exterior. So you're going to stick your rectangle ring in like so. Clip into, just clip together for right now. Same on the other one. Make sure your raw edges are facing up as you're sliding your ring in. Fold those together. And clip. Then you're going to take your main panel. And what we're going to do is we are going to put this on the pocket side from the back. So if you have a label, my label's in the front. That's my front of my back. I'm flipping this to my back. And I'm sticking this on the pocket portion of the back. Clipping this into place. Making sure that my edges are still all matching up. Clip. Same on the side, pocket edge, line that up with your seam where your two panels meet. Then we are going to base this into place going about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. You don't want to do, really go more than that. Okay, so now that we have the ring connectors on, I do suggest it, when connecting these, use some type of stiletto or something to help push this through the machine. You can use your nail like I did if you'd like to live dangerously, but if that scares you or make you uncomfortable, which it probably should, um, make sure you use a stiletto to help like push that through. And it could just be that my presser foot does not like this material, which that's fine. It'll be all right. So now we're going to move on to constructing the lining. And I did forget one other thing in the intro, which is a zipper and a zipper pull. I'm using a number five zipper 
with a zipper pull. I believe I got this zipper tape from Purple Dragon Fabrics. I believe so. And I believe that the zipper pull came from Win Wonderground Fabrics, I believe. It was either Wonderground Fabrics or Indo Love Creations. One of those two. Don't remember. But you're going to need your zipper for this next step. One of your bottom lining panels and one of your pocket panels that doesn't have a piece for it. So what we're going to do is we are going to find our center of our bottom lining. Line that up and mark your centers the way that I usually do. It's just snip, tiny little snip. Same thing here. Tiny little snip. Then we are going to draw out the box that they tell you to do in the pattern. I'm not going to do that on camera because then a uh, ruler, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. So don't do that. Once you have your box drawn, according to how the pattern asks you to do it, you are going to draw in your center line. You're basically just making a zipper box. If you've worked with zipper zippers before, this is pretty standard how they have you do this. But the fun part of this one is we are going to flip this right side up, take our material, lay that wrong side up, right side down, over top, kind of centering it. They do give you measurements in the pattern on how to do all this, but I like to just go like that. Then we're going to flip this. You could tape to hold that into place, or you can just hold it and live dangerously. And what we're going to do is we are going to stitch along the outside of this rectangle that we drew, stitching the pocket panel piece onto the lining piece. All right, my mic had a fatality from that clip to this one, so haha, now it's going to sound weird. Anywho. Now that we have this stitched in, what we're going to do is we are going to cut on these other lines that we drew. So fold this in half. Take a pair of scissors or a seam ripper or something along those lines. And we are going to just snip going through both the lining and the pocket. We want to go through all of this because this is how we're going to flip that pocket piece out. Well, like in-ish. It'll make sense in a second snap go diagonal and when you're going diagonal you want to get as close as you can to those stitches without cutting through them you still want the thread intact same on this side stitch through not enough to break your threads but to get dangerously close so you have an anxiety attack that's what we would like snip same over here snip and on this side, snip. Now over here, I did stitch a little too far out. So I'm gonna use my seam ripper and rip that out. Just take those couple stitches off. Melt these with my lighter just to secure those in, melt that into place. So everything is all good to go. All right, perfect. Now that that is done, what we're going to do is we are going to pull this pocket piece to the back of the lining panel. And with this, you can take this to the iron and you can like press this if you would like. I'm not going to pull my iron out today, so it's just going to chill. Giving that a nice press. You're going to want to roll these seams. Try to get this to lay as flat as you can. And now that's why that... Um, snipping over in the corners is very important. You want to make sure that you snip as close as you can to those stitches to help get this to lay really flat. Like so. This top one is a little harder to keep in place, but it'll be fine. And now from here, what we're going to do is we are going to take our zipper and we are going to center that into place in this hole that we made. Just sliding this here. Feel for the edges, make sure it lays how you would like. 
And then once we have it how we would like, you could also hold this into place with double-sided tape just to hold this here. I'm just gonna hold on to it for dear life today and stitch. And we are gonna stitch this into place going an eighth of an inch from this folded edge, which should be enough to hold the zipper into place as well. All right, now that we have that, the zipper is secured onto the panel. Our pocket is good to go. And what we're gonna do now is attach the other pocket piece. As you see, I got a little, little close over there, so it's fine. So you're gonna take your other pocket piece, lay that right sides down, and it's gonna cover your entire panel. And we are gonna stitch along the side the top and down the other side, we are not stitching this bottom. So what we can do is we can clip this into place. All right, perfect. Once we have that clipped, we're gonna have these three sides clipped. We are not stitching this one, that's why that's not clipped. I like to take this to the sewing machine and sew it this way, flipping it going up this side, pulling this out of the way, down this side, pulling this out of the way, down this side, securing the second pocket piece onto our pocket that we already have here. I'm gonna stitch it at about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once we have that done, our pocket is pretty much completely functional, minus the giant hole in the bottom but the sides are all connected, the top is connected, it is all good. That opening at the bottom is crucial. That is how we're turning our bag inside out, so that's what we need. Don't close up that lining. So, for right now, we are going to move this out of our way. We're gonna be needing it at the next step. So, push this close, but not too far, and then grab your two top lining panels. What we're gonna do now is install the magnetic snap and for this, you're going to find your center. Same way that I've been doing. I don't think I'm gonna notch this one. I'm just gonna fold it in half and create a crease on both. Like so. Open up. The pattern tells you how far to measure down from the center and mark. So we're gonna do that, lining that up with our center. Doing a quick little do 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 do. And then I can see my center is right there for my crease. Same on the other one. And this is just gonna be our placement for our magnetic snap, where we're gonna do like our hole. So once we have that marked, grab your hole punch or however you're popping your holes in and do exactly that, make your hole. Line it up. So I need to either get a new hole punch die or figure out how to sharpen this one because she she's dull. <laughs> and we're going to do the same on this one. Like that. And pop. Then we are going to take our snap. I'm using, magnet, I'm using a magnetic rivet snap. So this is gonna be a lot easier for me than the people who have like the foldy prongs. You guys have to do a whole different process. But for the magnetic snap one, it's as simple as I stick it in the hole, flip it over, snap the rivet on the back. Actually, I lied, don't do that yet. Eh, pop that off. Because what we need to do is we need to add some structure to this that is gonna be weak and that's gonna tear through. So I like to take some scrap fusible fleece that I have and just cut a little bit of that off and make a hole. And use that as some extra stability. Then I'm going to snip my rivet on. Same on the other one. And on the other side, I'm gonna take 
the right side, the one that's like has the actual snap part on it. Flip wrong side, sticks my extra fusible fleece, snap the rivet into place. Then I'm going to switch out my dies for the magnetic snap die and set these snaps. So I'm starting with the die that has the indent in it. So this one, I'm going to take the one that has my indent sticking out and that's going to sit in, making it so it sits, sets the snap correctly. If you did it the other way, it wouldn't make that much difference for this one, but it will if you put this one in the one where it's pushing out because then what that's going to do is flat out that little nub, which then it defeats the whole purpose. So make sure the one, the piece on your snap with the nub goes into the die that has the indent, not has the nub. Indent, nub. Set. Our rivet is pushing up. Smoosh. And then that one is all set and ready to go. Then we're going to switch this out. This die has the nub sticking up. Not sure how well you can see that. Hopefully you can see it well. So we're going to take the side of the snap that has the indent going in. And so when they go together, the nub on the die fits into the indent on the snap. Stick that in. And smoosh. And of course that's the magnetic side. So that likes to stick. So once we have that, our snap is set and ready to go. Once you're prepped with that, grab your two lining pieces. And what we're gonna do is attach these onto our linings. So I liked it. I don't think it really matters which side of the snap goes on what side, but like, if you have a preference, go with your preference. But you're gonna take your right side together and put it along the top edge of your bottom panel. And we are going to clip into place along this top edge. If you need to, make sure it's centered. Because again, my pieces got a little wonky when I was cutting it. Ta-da! We're going to do the same on the other one. I'm just going to fold to get my crease for my center. Like that. Move. Fuzzies. Line this face down. and clip into place. Then once we have these two lining pieces clipped up and ready to go, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are gonna stitch along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance, securing the bottom lining to the top lining. Now that that is done, while I was over at the sewing machine, I did also top stitch these panels with the seam allowance going down towards the bottom on both side on both of the interior panels. So now that we're at this step, what we're going to do is we are going to take our lining panels right sides together, line up your snap, it should line up pretty correctly, like center center should be good. <laughs> snap that into place. And then what we're going to do is we are going to clip along both side ed sides of our panel making sure everything lines up the best that it can all right perfect once you have these two clipped we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this into place at a half of an inch seam allowance just going so short sides we're not stitching these guys just these guys just these all right half inch seam allowance Now that we have these sides stitched, we can trim the seam allowance down to a half inch or just, I mean a quarter inch, or just cut this in half. That's why I said a half inch, because I was going to say cut in half next. Ha ha ha. But that's what we're going to do. We're just going to trim the seam allowance down. Now we are going to move on to attaching the bottoms onto both the exterior and the interior. Now when attaching this on my first bag, 
I did a little stupid <laughs> and I put the panel on, the bottom panel on the wrong way where on the exterior, this is a lot easier to mess up than on the interior. Interior, a little easy. I took <laughs> the exterior and instead of me attaching it like this, where it's long ways goes with long, I was stupid and did it like this and it looked weird. So we're going to avoid that together today on the exterior. Interior, it's a lot harder to mess up. But what you're going to do is you're going to find your centers. Smoosh. Little, tiny, little notch. Pew. Tiny, little notch. Pew. So that's hot dog. No, that was hamburger. Now we fold hot dog. Can we tell that I am hungry? Because I keep making food references. Keep. Same on this side. Sneep. And then we're going to line that up with our center markings that we have on our uh, exterior, I mean interior. So we're going to line this one up with this one. And we are going to clip. Go over, line this one up with our center fold, which I am going to add a little notchy notch because I once I unfold the center fold, I can't see it anymore. Sneak. There we go. Notch with notch. Clip. On the side, our center mark is our seam. Now for these, I like to open my seams. I don't think it gives you a specification in the pattern. So, do that, whatever makes you happy. Pew. Line that up. This seam doesn't want to open. I'll come back to it when I feel like fighting. To the other side. That is my best way of handling stuff when I get annoyed in the sewing room. All right, I'm just gonna move on to something over here. I'll come back to that in a second. It's not gonna go anywhere. Clip, turn, open, sesame, and center. There we go. See, I just needed to take a break from it because it's fine now. Clip. And now I don't know what it is with me with doing these types of bottoms, but they never want to lay correctly. Could just be me. Could easily be my cutting. Could be off. Something's weird. So if this doesn't lay right, it's an interior. I am not worried about it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and clip the bottom to the lining. Okay, so as we see when I am pinning this, there are a lot of pleats over in the rounded edges. It's the lining. I don't care. People are not going to inspect your lining to make sure everything is perfect and flat and no pleating and it's a lining it's a bottom nobody's gonna notice so I do not care when I do the exterior I make sure everything in my power that this does not happen but since it's a lining I don't care so once we have this in we are gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch around this entire bottom at a half of an inch seam allowance Okay, now that we have that bottom stitched in, again, I do have some pleats. It's fine. It's a bottom. It's a lining. I am not worried about it. So we are going to trim down the seam allowance in half to a quarter inch, just like we did for the sides. And now you can even double check that when you open this, you can't tell how bad the pleating is. And looking in there, you really can't. I know it's kind of like dark, but you, you can't. Because it's around those curves, it looks fine. You don't even notice it at all. That's why I don't worry about it when it's aligning. But for the exterior, which we're going to clip in next, I do care. And this is also where you want to make sure that you don't 
mess up how it's supposed to lay. <laughs> so a good way to do this is to make sure you have your center marks on all four of your panels. Good way to do this is to take your exterior, pull it, lining up your seams for all the panels, and then doing a little meep in the seam allowance. Same over here. Nice little wapow. Now we have the center marked on the front, but we need to do that for the back. And that, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to line up the panels. Give that a nice little tug. And snip within the seam allowance. Now, to make sure you don't mess up like I did, it's good to look at it this way. <laughs> Turn your exterior right side in, wrong side out. Then find your front piece, your front panel. For me, it's easy to find because it has my um, tag on. Flatten out the bag. Long side is supposed to go here, like this. So you have your front panel with your tag, long side of the bottom. You do not want to do it this way where the rounded edges goes on these two panels. That's a no-no. You want the long side to be here in the center of the front panel. Now we're gonna mark our centers on here as well. Just fold this in half and do your notches. Same way we've been doing for all the other panels. This is honestly my favorite ways to mark centers because it's so easy to find. And then hot dog this one. And little notch. Same on the other side. Little notch. Then we're gonna go through and clip this into place. Remembering long side center goes on center front panel. Take that, line that up, clip there. Go to the other side, long side, fancy center panel. Clip. Turn. Hoop center, little hoop de hoop center, goes on the center of your side panel. And clip. Same on the other side. Hoop de hoop center goes on center side panel with your pocket. Like that. You want it like that. <laughs> Not the other way. So now we're going to go through and we're going to clip this whole bottom into place. And I am going to try my darn darndest to make sure that I have zero pleats on the outside, which it is a lot easier with the stabilizer on the outside. So go ahead and clip this into place. All right, now that that is all clipped, I made sure that there were no pleats throughout this entire thing. And I really do think having that Peltex on the bottom does help because it like forces the exterior to get out of the way, like push, get out of the way, mold to where I need you to mold. Don't fight with me here. So now that we have this how we want and we made sure that it is laid out the correct way where it goes like this, <laughs> We are good to head over to the sewing machine and stitch along this bottom edge at a half of an inch seam allowance, securing the bottom onto the exterior. Now that that is complete, we are good to trim down this uh, seam allowance, pretty much just cutting it in half like we did for the lining. The side pockets are harder to trim just because you're going through the side pocket, the side panel, the front and exterior of the side pocket and the side panel. 
there's a lot that you're trimming down there. So those I kind of just skim around. Once you have that trimmed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our exterior, put this right side out. Oh, this looks so stinking cute. Check to make sure that your bottom looks how you want it. Don't have any pleats or any creases or anything weird that we don't want to see. Oh, that looks so stinking cute. Yeah, and the bottom looks really nice. This would be really cute with like purse feet. If you want to like put purse feet down here, that would probably be adorable. Anywho, okay. So once you have that, shoosh, that is right side out. Move that out of the way, grab your lining. We're gonna keep this wrong side out, but we're gonna make sure we open our zipper. So go ahead and make sure that is open. Cause again, this pocket is how we are turning the entire thing inside out. Then we are going to take the exterior and stick it inside the lining. Lining up the top raw edges. So to line these up, take your side center, which should be where we have one of our little dangly ringy thingies. Line that up with our side seams for our lining and clip into place. Clip, then do the same on the other side. You might have to like jam that exterior in there a little more if it's fighting you. There we go. Then take the other center side thingy and clip that into place. Clip your centers on the front and back. Then go through and clip the rest of the panel into place. All right, and then once we have this all clipped together, we are gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are gonna top stitch, well, not top stitch. We are going to stitch this together at a half of an inch seam allowance, securing the exterior to the interior. Now that we have that stitched into place, we are gonna turn this right side out through our lovely pocket hole. We are not gonna trim down that seam, by the way. Keep that long. So pull this out. You can stip, stitch up that pocket now if you would like. I like to do it after I top stitch, so I'm not gonna do that quite yet. <laughs> We are gonna stick the lining inside of the bag, giving everything a nice tug, rolling those seams. We have any of these like little fray guys. I don't know why I always get those. Like I always get them. Oh my God, this looks so cute. that. Then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch along, we're going to top stitch along the top edge, rolling our seams so we don't see the lining at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, securing everything into place and doing the final stitch of the bag. Well, almost the final stitch if you didn't close that up yet. Second to last stitch. Okay, now that we have that top all stitched, 
and set. We are good to move on to attaching our strap. Another thing that I did forget to mention in the front is you're going to need rivets, your rivet press, your dies for your rivets so we can set these in. So grab your strap cut to the length that is double the size that they tell you in the pattern if you are using webbing. If you're using a uh, build your own strap where you're making it out of fabric, do it the way that they tell you in the pattern. If you're using webbing, double the length that they tell you to cut it. Do not cut it into two pieces. One really, really long piece is all you're going to need. You are also going to need your two adjustable sliders. Clips we don't really need, so they can go away, but we do need our press and our hole punches. So what you're going to do to start this off is you are going to take your webbing, aka strap, and we are going to weed, like, slip this through these, um, these slit, like, little loops, starting from the front center. Go, I'm going to go to the right first. I'm going to pull that through. Go on the other loop. Pull that through. See, I wanted to have another one, like, right here, but that didn't work out. So, it's okay. Then pull this one then we're going to take it on the back give yourself an ample amount of webbing we're going to make sure our webbing stays straight we're going to take our first adjustable slider and we're just going to feed that in going up and over that center bar we're kind of doing this backwards from the way that we usually do this, so keep that in mind that this is going to be weird how this is going to come together. Once you have your slider on, we're going to go under, going to go through like the bottom end of the ring, going up this way, again making sure everything is staying straight. Like so. Then we are going to take our slider Make sure we have room. We're going to take that tail end of the webbing going up under where we went over before, over that center ring, that center like bar and out. And again, making sure everything stayed straight. It's going to look like this, where it's kind of like you got this guy over here, this one looped under and you're set there. Then we're going to rivet this into place. So take your hole punch, find your center. I'm just going to eyeball because I hate measuring if I don't actually need to. Smoosh. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> like I said, I need to get a new one or I need to sharpen it. I don't know how to do that, so... I'm just going to exert force until everything breaks. Then I'm going to stick the ribbon in the hole. Grab a ribbon and a cap. Stick that in the hole. Stick that in the hole. And then snap this into place. I like to do two rivets on this. So then I am just going to get a little closer to my edge, but still keeping my center, and smoosh into place, and grab another rivet, and rivet that into place, and like snap those holding them. Then we're going to do the same on the other side, where we're going to take this end of the strap, let me pull some extra out over here. We're going to keep this straight. We're going to go through this loop here, ensuring that it's straight. This loop here, ensuring that it's straight. This loop. Again, keeping it straight. There we go, much better. Up from the bottom. Then slide your extra strap out of the way so you can take your raw edge 
going up through these two here under that bar then we're going to slide the bar down we're going to take this raw edge and we're going to go over the bar but under the other side of the strap like that so this is going to create a little like loop under the bar we already have and then again we are going to snap holes and put rivets in the holes holding this into place oh this looks so cute this is like a cute little explorer bag anywho <laughs> Double check and make sure that everything is laying straight, which it is. And then we are good to set these rivets into place, completing our bag. So we're gonna switch out our dies and then set these rivets into place. And then we're gonna do the same on this one. And smoosh with the final rivet being the completion of the bag. All right, and our Roxanne backpack is done. There are modifications to this bag that are in the pattern, so you can make this a tote instead of a backpack. And the main differences with that is just that you're not gonna be doing the strap loops or the side connectors. There's a whole nother way of putting all the handles together so you have the two handles instead of a backpack strap. But I think this looks really cute. I love this detail of the strap connectors with the little like loopy loops. They're so cute and it comes together so nicely. And I mean, just look at this bag. It looks like a little explorer bag. Like I'm about to go through my Animal Crossing islands and hang out with all my little buddies. And it just, it's so cute. The little singe accent that they have on here just is beautiful. It is mind blowing. I never even thought about doing it that way. The only time I've ever seen like singe, like cinch, is it singe or cinch? I think it's cinch. Yeah, it's gotta be cinch. So the only time I've seen a cinch like mechanic work is through grommets. And now I don't have the grommet cutter, the whole grommet hole cutter or the grommet press dies for my press. So I definitely need to invest in those. It's on my list of things to do. That list is very long, but anyhow back to the bag. <laughs> I ramble so much. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> the bag is so cute. It does not get the hype that I think it deserves because it is, I think this is a fairly beginner-ish pattern. I would probably put this as like a confident beginner pattern just because the materials go all together. I truly think it comes down to your material materials. If you're banging this bag out with all cotton, this bag is going to go very quickly. You're not going to have a lot of issues with doing this with cotton. If you go all vinyl, this is going to be harder. If you even take it a step further from that and maybe do this bag in like leather, ooh, that would be really pretty. But that again is another aspect of adding challenge to this bag it comes down to the materials that you use. So for the materials that I used, which was a little bit of vinyl, a lot of cotton, this was a fairly simple bag that I do think anybody can make. I do think there are possibilities on the inside of the bag for you to add onto this pattern, add a couple of slip pockets, maybe on the inside, create kind of like a mesh water bottle-ish pocket. Well, maybe not a water bottle-ish pocket, but like a mesh pocket would be pretty cool. Water bottle just stick on the outside. Anyway, <laughs> I think this bag is an adorable little mini backpack. It does lay very comfortably on me. Let me show you guys. I do have to back up and you're going to see part of it, but I don't have a lot of room. So like backing it up here, I'm kind of like crouching so you guys can see all of me. It does lay very nicely. And when I fully expand it like all the way, it does hang down pretty nice and then sink it up. It again lays very nice. It is flat on the back. It's a very cute, like in style look right now that I think a lot of people are going to like to buy. So I highly suggest you guys try this pattern. I don't think I've had a single swoon pattern. I lied. There is one pattern that means uh, I don't get along with that pattern. Me and the Denver backpack, we are not friends. <laughs> I have tried to make that backpack so many times, it doesn't like me. Anyway, 
that is the only swoon pattern that I don't get along with and I truly just think it's me because <laughs> everybody else loves that backpack pattern. It just doesn't like me. It just doesn't want to work for me. <laughs> but this backpack pattern went together so nicely. This bottom part is such a cute accent. You could put like purse feet on here. That'll just give it that extra oomph, the extra classiness that people love when they look at style bags this way. Definitely change up your materials. Try different fabric combinations. Try adding maybe more hoops. See how more hoops go. Maybe you like the look of all these little things smooshing out. Maybe you don't. Add to it. Play with it definitely give this one a try it is so cute and i do not think people are hyped up hyped up about this bag enough it is adorable and i cannot wait to see what you guys do with this um thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it as always leave me a comment down in the comments i love talking with you guys seeing you guys watch my videos and like everything if you have any questions please let me know i will have links to patterns materials all my stuff in the description and I will see you guys next week. Have a nice one.